In the second part of this tutorial we did the API call. So right now our app not only looks nice but it also has a function. We can search for different cities. The changing of the temperature, the location and the background image works pretty well. So what should we do next? We should place an icon here above the temperature. This icon will show the current weather state and will change when the user searches another city. Let's see what we can do about this. At the top of the API's website we can see a set of icons. One icon for each of the states of the weather. Exactly what we want, right? So check out how can we use it. Ok, so we have to replace this X with the weather state abbreviation. Alright, as we can see the location method can give back this exact data. So in our fetch location function we need to set the abbreviation to the abbreviation part of the data. So let's create an abbreviation string, but <laughs> pay attention to the spelling of the word and try not to miss an I of abbreviation like I did when I wrote the code. Then we can create a centered image inside the upper column, so above the temperature text. Here we can type image.network to get the image from a URL. Let's get this URL from the website. As you can see here, we can refer to this like static slash img slash weather slash png slash the name of the icon. So let's try it out with writing after the base URL. And here we go, here is this beautiful sun icon. So let's paste this address in our code and place the abbreviation state before the .png extension. So the icon will change as the weather state changes. And let's change the width to 100. Run it again and try it out. As you can see we have those icons in our app. But what about the starting screen? It still says it's zero degree in San Francisco and only after the first search changes to 20 degrees. To solve this we should create an in state function. This function will be called at the beginning of the app. So we don't have to wait for the user to search for a city to be able to call our data fetching functions. So in this in state let's write a supper.initState and then fetch location function. We don't need to call the fetch search function here since we have already set the where on earth ID to the ID of San Francisco. Now we can run it and let's see, this zero have to change to the actual temperature and an icon has to appear and also the background image has to change if the actual weather is not clear. And there it is, it's 20 degrees Celsius in San Francisco right now with a clear weather, it's a very nice weather. But as we have seen this change took approximately 7 long seconds, which can be confusing without knowing something will happen soon. Unfortunately our API call needs this 7 seconds to send the request and get back the data. Maybe your app is faster a little bit because the speed depends on the speed of the internet. Since we, or at least I, don't have an internet with the speed of light, I have another idea to solve this. The simplest solution is to place a progress indicator on the screen until the data is loading. For this we should delete the initial value of the temperature and inside the scaffold we should check that this temperature is equal to null, which means it doesn't have data yet. If it's null, so there's no data, the user will see a center circular progress indicator like this. And when the data has arrived the app shows everything as earlier. I think it looks much better and it's less confusing. The last problem is the multiple enters problem, meaning we have to press enter two or three times to get the data. We can easily solve this as well. We only need to call our two fetching function inside the onTextField submitted function as asynchron functions, because they are asynchron functions after all. We are almost ready. We have the actual data from different cities, everything works nicely. We can play a little bit with our app, but there is still one little incompleteness. 
try out that what happens if you search for a non-existing city or a city which isn't in the database. There's an error in the console, but in the app, nothing, which is again confusing. And we'd like to write apps that are as clear for the users as possible, so we need some kind of feedback to the user. For this, let's create an error message variable. We need to wait for this error in the fetch search function because the error could happen after the user typed in a wrong city. We need to create a try catch block where we need to place the best case scenario, aka when the user search a city from the database into the try part, and the worst case scenario should come to the catch part. The catch part will catch is the error, and here we can set the error message like sorry, we don't have data about the city, or something like this. And in the try part, let's set this error to an empty string. Now we need to display this error message. Probably you remember that we made the text field inside of a column widget because of this error message. So let's create a text widget down here. It displays the error message, it's aligned to center and has a color of red, just to look more like an error. I set the font size differently for Android and iOS because when I tried out in both platforms I felt way too big on Android. We can do this by using platform that is Android and set it to 15 if true and to 20 if false. We also have to import the IO package for this. Alright, let's type in something wrong. And voila, it works, the user gets the error message. We have only one thing to do, an actual app has a proper app icon and not just a default Flutter app icon, so let's change this icon. I made an icon specifically for this app. You can download this app icon package for this project from the GitHub repository. After you unzip it, you will find a folder for the Android icons and another for the iOS icons. Let's start with the iOS icons. For this, we need to open the iOS folder. Here we can go to the runner folder and reveal it in finder or your file Here we manager. Need to delete the assets.xc assets folder and replace it with the same named folder from the app icons folder you just downloaded. As for the Android icons, we need to navigate to the Android folder inside the weather app. Then go to src, the source folder, then main and then reveal the res folder. In this res folder we can find a lot of subfolders called mipmap. Delete all of those. In the downloaded app icons Android folder there are folders with the same name so let's copy them to the res folder. Now we only need to rerun our app and after we close it we will find this new app icon. I tried it on Android as well and as you can see it works perfectly. So we are ready with the weather app. There is nothing to do but to enjoy our newly made application and get to know the weather in as many cities as possible. <laughs> See you guys in my next video.